Greetings nerdy list aficionados and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd and today we're back to the secrets. These secrets changed everything, or well, at least they did temporarily. You know how comics are, pathologically addicted to the status quo. Except when it's something I want to happen. You know how it is. Kelly's off doing tiff things and being fabulous, and so that means I'll be giving you part two. I'm Sasha and these are the Top 10 Superhero Secrets that changed everything, part two. Number 10, Three Jokers. So this was clearly meant to be a big deal, and maybe it could creep up and bite us still at some point. And some claim, oh, it already happened. The three Jokers are the three eras. But to that I say, we are more than three comic book eras in. So what was this? Well, near the end of the New 52, when Batman got into the Mobius chair, the Deus Ex chair, or the Exposition chair, that was omniscient, so you could know pretty much all the things. Well, Batman was testing it out by asking it questions. And he asked it, what's the Joker's true name? And he's all, no, that's not true. That's that's impossible. But sadly, no one's hand gets cut off. Instead, we go through a whole Dark Side War thing, and after, when Hal comes to see Bruce in the Batcave, because Hal and Bruce were close in the New 52, cuz. So Hal's like, what did the chair tell you? They had to force Batman off the chair. It was all very dramatic and silly. I'm never getting out of this chair. So the chair told him that there were three Jokers. So there's supposed to be a Batman Three Jokers comic, and the rumored release was 2019. So they better hurry up. At the time of this recording, it's September of 2019. So tick tock. This reveal, it's a mileage varies thing from awesome to wow, that really destroys the lore and connection between Batman and the Joker. So if this happens, it will change everything. But we're a universe reboot in and headed towards another crisis style event, so we'll see. Number 9, Magneto's Not Zorn. So Grant Morrison's X-Men run, the new X-Men run, is quite a lauded run, but it also had a lot of bizarre moments, and one of them was the big Zorn twist. So Zorn was created for New X-Men Annual 2001, so for this run. He was imprisoned by the Chinese government and forced to wear a mask to contain his black hole of a head. His head's a black hole. The X-Men end up saving him as he is trying to commit suicide by taking off his mask. Long story short, he ends up teaching at the school. His helmet blocks Xavier's telepathy, by the way. This will be important later. So then we have the reveal that, haha, Zorn Zorn was Magneto all along. Why? Cause, haha, so cool, what a twist. Sometimes if you have a good enough rep, you can get away with any twist, but if somebody else did it, they'd be laughed at. This twist would prove to be so perplexing, it would ultimately be retconned away in a truly convoluted manner. Now some were like, oh look, there were clues, but there was contention between Morrison and the editors, cause the editors liked Zorn as a character and wanted to keep him around. And we're like, there's potential there. Also, this kind of ruins Magneto, but Morrison was like, I do I want. I had Talia rate Batman because I didn't reread the issue I was basing it off of. So it went ahead, but Marvel would retcon this. But Marvel would retcon the Zorn reveal to create a second Zorn so they could keep using Zorn and Magneto. So where did all this end up? The first Zorn was really Zorn, posing as Magneto, posing as Zorn. Now there are multiple Zorns, so he's around. It changed everything and also showcases how some things are such a mess you have to break your spine to fix them. This twist is polarizing. Some love it and others pull the, oh, you don't like it? You just don't get it. Number eight, Dr. Manhattan and New 52 Superman. So Doomsday Clock is a big DC event that is merging the DC and Watchmen universes. This event has been going on forever now. It started in 2017 and is set to end now in 2020. It is 12 issues. That's ludicrous. So in it, one of the reveals is that Dr. Manhattan has been observing Superman and how he impacts the meta timeline, which is how they refer to the main DC verse. He notices that the timeline shifts around Superman's arrival and how everything can change, but not Superman. So he actually ends up subtly shifting one of these relaunches, resulting in the new 52 timeline Superman, the Superman who is more distant and removed from his humanity. There were also hints that the main goal of this series secretly in the background was to shift responsibility for the new 52 verse from Barry to Dr. Manhattan. But it took too long, so thanks a lot, Barry. So Dr. Manhattan gave the world what some people consider one of the most OC Superman of all time. Some people love him. Different strokes for different folks. Number seven, Cyclops is a psychic projection. So Death Death of X, the arc wherein Cyclops sacrificed himself fighting Black Bolt, and was the catalyst for the mutant inhuman impasse kind of cessation of open hostilities. Well, that's not how Cyclops died at all. This was an illusion created by his partner, Emma Frost. In truth, Cyclops caught M-Pox, which the internet sardonically referred to as mutant cancer. This was a big reveal, though there were hints, like the fact that Emma and Scott were never seen separately. 
How did this change everything? Well, because of this false projection, young Cyclops, who is in the timeline as the younger versions of the original X-Men had been brought forward in time, he resented what he was to become and fought against it. This would further damage Cyclops' rep. We're rebooting all of the X-Men though, so we're gonna have to see where all of these changes and twists and turns end up. What will matter in the long run? Exciting times. Number six, Terra, the Judas Contract. We're talking about the original run from the new Teen Titans in the 80s. This Terra is still one of my faves. She's a ruthless sociopath who hates the Teen Titans. Her time with them doesn't soften or sway her. She's collecting data and ready to take them down. She even has agency in her affair with Deathstroke. Is he a creep for accepting her advances? Yes. She's actually of age, but let's not fall down that rabbit hole. People focus on that, and then they end up focusing on Deathstroke and lose all the glory that is evil Terra. This revelation shook the team to their core. Terra was their friend. She was involved in their wedding. She had a thing with Beast Boy. She was deeply involved with them for months. Her betrayal hurt them, and it was a wound that never fully healed. It changed the team's dynamic, and it's still a benchmark for betrayal. Even though these days you have a more sympathetic Terra, which is also a good angle, they're both good. But I'll always have a soft spot for hardcore evil. That and petty evil. Love me some comic book pettiness. Not in real life though. No real life pettiness, please. Number five, Reed Richards and the Cosmic Rays. You know Reed had to be on here somewhere, Mr. Fantastic himself. We've gotta to go to Retcon Land for this one, but Retcon Land is a frequent stop in Comic Book Bill. So initially, the incident that created the Fantastic Four, bombarded by Cosmic Rays and what have you, was an accident. However, years later, Reed's journal would be discovered and it would paint a very different picture. In it, he would detail a concern over an increase in superpowered beings and mutants. So he wanted to create his own superpowered team to counteract those he believed would not act with the best of intentions. This is also the source of some of the tension between him and the X-Men. Despite Franklin, his son, being a mutant, Reed hasn't always been their staunchest supporter. So it turned out that Reed had designed the spacecraft to harness the rays so that he and the crew would be exposed. Now Reed would claim he didn't remember writing that, and so began a plot of perhaps it had been his subconscious mind, or was it a fake entry made by Doom or someone else to dissolve the team? The answer is never fully there. Now with all I know about Reed, I think he did, but not on purpose. I wish they had gone with that. It would have been a great parallel for Doom. Brilliant men who couldn't conceive of making a mistake, who make a huge one that completely alters their lives. Because of their own hubris. I'm here for it. Dooms turns him into a despot, and yet Reed gains a family. It would be such a great foundation for their hate for each other. Number four, Gwen Stacy and Norman Osborn, secret affair. Who greenlit this? So this was a plot twist reveal that was trying to give more agency to Gwen and her death in 1973. However, just like Batgirl mounting Batman on the rooftop, it went awry. Now, Norman hadn't just killed Gwen to go after Peter. No, he'd been sleeping with her and had gotten her pregnant, and they'd had twins, secret twins. And when he learned that she was gonna take those twins and raise them with Peter, he snapped, killing her. He took the kids, hyperaged them, and told them it was all Spidey's fault. This way, Spidey could have drama with Gwen's kids. It's just the reveal of it too. The panels of her sleeping with Norman and Peter's question, his takeaway was, was he still her first? Priorities. Oh, she slept with Norman, but after me, that's all right then. This was poorly received and is often mocked. Nothing like a secret pregnancy plot. Number three, Ozymandias from The Watchmen. He did it 35 minutes ago. And this secret, his plan, is the entire mystery that is being worked through in Watchmen. The depths of his deception are truly intricate. This plan has been in motion for years, most of his adult life has been a front for this one moment. He hired someone with a fake job to give them cancer so it would pay off years later. Ozymandias is a complex character in that what he does can be viewed as heinous, but the goal is pure, and the way he goes about it is both villainous and heroic. Heroic in the way that it involves massive self-sacrifice. He gives up everything for this, his life, his friends, he's a shell trying to save the world in the only way he thinks will work. But also he doubts, which separates him from a supervillain. After it's all done, he does wonder, was it the right thing? Yeah, I'm gushing, but whatevs. Give me a nuanced Adrian. None of this, oh, he was wrong. Let me decide how I feel, DC. Don't decide for me. Number two, Nick Fury, Original Sin. So Original Sin was a series that was full of <gasps> legasp moments and the reveal of secrets, some cooler than others. And a lot of books that felt like, okay, yeah, secret, can we get back to our plots now? Mileage varied on these reveals a lot from comic to comic. But one of the big takeaways, spoilers, was that Nick Fury was a life model duplicate or decoy. And the real Nick Fury has been lurking in the shadows, covertly taking down threats, while his life model duplicate did lots of the wacky zany stuff we saw. Oh man, did mileage vary on this. But not as much as for our number one. I think you know what it is, Hail Hydra. Now Hydra Cap, 
Listen, there are people who love this plot and people who hate it, and the rationales are more complex than people think. So I'm going to focus on one element that really bothered people, even some people who liked this plot. So before Captain America, Steve Rogers, or Steve Rogers Captain America as it was always laid out in the title card, Cap had been old. Then he was de-aged by a sentient cosmic cube. But it turned out that the cube had rewritten Marvel history. So think of the pre-existing timeline as Marvel 616A and post-cosmic cube we live in as Marvel 616B. Now in B it was revealed that Cap was a Hydra agent the whole time, but everything else was the same. So all the adventures that you would see in 616A that had still happened in B, all Hydra Cap, everything. Cap Wolf, Hydra Cap. Cap on Meth, Hydra Cap. The resolution of this isn't exactly what people say it is. They like to say, oh no, Hydra Cap was fake. No, he was real. The Captain America who comes back to take him out is fetched from timeline A, but everything else and everyone else is in timeline B. So yeah, he's technically Cap, but not the Cap from that timeline, which superseded the original timeline, making it the prime timeline. And Cap A, hence an alternate, and Cap B, Hydra Cap, the real Cap. Huh. Now most people just choose the first explanation, that it was always fake Cap. So Hydra Cap was always fake and they went and got back real Cap, which should have been what they went with from the start. It would have helped. It wouldn't have alleviated the backlash, but it would have helped. Timing and such a huge shift in character center meant that some will always hate this, but some felt it had potential. Maybe it should have been a what if. Hydra Supreme is still around somewhere. Will he be back? Maybe he already is. Dun dun dun. So those were 10 more superhero secrets that changed everything. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Sasha. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for more nerdy lists. Hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid, and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.